the last presentation it comes from South Africa. Success in satellite delivery of in-flight connectivity by Carl Kepke, or Kepke um, Global Eagle out of SA. Thank you very much. I, I hope I can uh, do the, the graveyard shift uh, a, a, a pleasure here. Uh, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about the commercial applications of satellite communications. Um, I, I'm from South Africa, by the way, but uh, the company is American. <laughs> so um, our, what we do is we supply uh, satellite communication services uh, to people on the move. And we, we define people on the move, people in aircraft, people on uh, maritime uh, vessels. We define them as people in remote locations. And, and when we talk about communication and services to them, it's not merely the provisioning of, of the link itself, but actual content and media and services to these people. So, so we do spend a lot of time on a, uh, three parts of our business, uh, what we call passenger experience. And passenger experience is uh, them utilizing the, the capabilities of what we supply on the actual link itself. Uh, so we look at uh, customer, the elements of customer loyalty, streaming of, device, streaming of content, uh, internet browsing, uh, and, and products like that. And then we actually do the connectivity side of it as well. But many of our customers don't actually realize uh, what happens behind the link itself. Um, they don't care about that it's a satellite communication link. They don't care about the fact that it's on an aircraft. They don't care about the fact that they're sitting in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on a cruise ship with 4,500 other passengers. They want the right to have a, a video on demand. They want to have the right to stream video. They want to have Netflix running. Uh, they want to browse the internet. They want to do e-commerce. So these are all the applications. But when we look at our customers, which are the airlines, the cruise ships, uh, the NGOs, they want to know what's going on in the aircraft. They want to know what's going on in the, on the ship itself. So we supply a lot of operational uh, data and operational capabilities to the, the users of our or the operators of our service. So the, the, the next slide is very busy um, because Barry only gave me 10 minutes and said I, I had very few slides that I could present. So I, I'm going to use a, a busy slide and I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Um, and, and, the, and the purpose of the slide is to talk about why, do you, why we think we, we have the right to talk about um, you know, satellite communications and how we use it. So on the aviation side, we maintain the single largest connected aircraft fleet in the world. It's uh, 712 aircraft. Now, it may not sound like a, a lot of uh, uh, aircraft because there was someone talking about 15,000 VSAT terminals in Turkey alone. But to give you an idea, um, it is the third largest fleet in the world, uh, third largest airline. Uh, they're all connected. These are people that use in excess of 250 gigabyte per aircraft per month. Uh, and we supply the communication to that particular airline. Uh, they're running 737s, but we recently also got Air France, which is Airbus. Um, we do a lot of the interfacing on the aircraft itself. So when you actually get on the aircraft, you don't have a blank browser and you start browsing by linking to the Wi-Fi connection. You get a, what we term a portal and it gives you aspects like TripAdvisor information, weather information, flight information, moving map information, uh, movies on demand, TV series, browsing applications. And we develop all that back-end stuff and we also develop all the APIs that sit behind it, which means you can pay with Apple Pay, you can pay with your MasterCard, credit cards. Uh, you can pay with loyalty systems, you, in other words, miles. Uh, we also supply the same type of services to uh, maritime platforms. So we supply uh, probably 70% of the super yacht market. Now, to give you an idea, super yacht is defined 65 meters or 56 meters and longer. Uh, our biggest customer is a, a gentleman who has a 140 meter yacht. Uh, he runs a 155 megabit link into his yacht for global services, which means he gets 155 megabit onto his super yacht anywhere on any ocean, anywhere in the world. Um, and, and basically, we provide all the infrastructure to support that kind of network. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we supply uh, services to cruise ships. So they have four and a half, five and a half thousand passengers uh, that want internet browsing, that want video on demand. So we run hundreds of megabits 
into those cruise ships, again, in, in various locations in the world. So the maps on the bottom left show our KU band and C band coverage. Uh, we're running about 13 gigahertz worth of satellite capacity at the moment, uh, and we're growing at about 30% every year, uh, which gives you an indication of, of the growth of the communication requirements on, to, on board these vessels. So a little bit more on, on satellites. Um, we traditionally, on the terrestrial and the maritime side, use C-band, um, and on the aviation side, KU-band. Um, but in the United States, we've actually run out of KU-band capacity to support some of our airlines. Um, so we've uh, switched to a GOKA-band satellite. Uh, Michael would be happy, it's a, it's a huge satellite. Um, so we, we, we're running that at the moment, we're switching part of one of the networks across onto a KUA band um, solution. Um, but at the same time, we're actually looking at other technologies, uh, meaning LEOs and MEOs. Uh, so again, in our terrestrial and our maritime business, we're running uh, a couple of links on, on MEOs, which will make Hussein happy because it's an O3B service. Um, but what is interesting is that we've recently started testing uh, LEOs. Uh, about three weeks ago, we actually had an airborne platform, in other words, uh, 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 an aircraft that was flying with one of our KA band antennas on board, and we switched from a Geo uh, to a Telesat Leo, um, and then back onto the Geo. And we were supporting, uh, in those test conditions, we were support supporting a link from the aircraft down to ground uh, at 30 megabits. And, and, and just to give an idea, this really is a, an R&D effort. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot when you look at other solutions, but on an airborne platform that's tracking a satellite that you can only see for seven minutes in its duration, and then switching back to a, a geo again without the customers realizing that you're switching between a, a geo and a leo, and then back to a, a, a geo, it gives you kind of an idea of, of, of the things that we're looking at. Now, the reason we're doing things like that is um, traditional satellites have what I term a constant power or constant data requirement. In other words, when you sit at a, at a location, you get you know, 10 megabit or 100 megabit and in the, into that terminal. But what we are finding is with airborne platforms uh, that you have a variety of data requirements. So if you look at uh, the United States, and that's a map that we have of the data requirements based on the actual requirements of the aircraft flying into a particular region. So what that means is we supply services where we term uh, gate to gate. So as soon as you get on the aircraft, you're linked onto a satellite communication network, you start browsing, you can run on it. Um, while you're sitting in the seat, while people are boarding, you're reconnected. You connect it while the aircraft takes off. You, in cruise phase, you connect it, and when you land, you still remain connected right up to the gate. So we, we term that technology gate to gate. Now, if you imagine uh, a hub like Chicago, a hair airport, which is one of the major airports in the United States, you have um, aircraft coming in every minute, every minute and a half. So if you look at the data requirement growing in that radius around the airport, you have all these aircraft coming into a location and they're all demanding multiple megabits at the same time, which is completely different than an aircraft that is flying, let's say, over um, Arizona on a point-to-point on a -point link, and it's a single aircraft, and maybe there are five or six aircraft within a 50-kilometer radius from, from that particular aircraft. So you need to have the ability to scale your capacity almost dynamically in your network so that you can cater for these demands, because the last thing you want is an airline to, for, for you to tell an airline, well, while you're at the airport, um, you're only going to get kilobits into your aircraft, but never mind the fact that when you're over, uh, uh, let's say, Arizona, we can give you the multiple megabits. So, and, and it's very important to keep that in mind, that you have to have that kind of flexibility. So what we're looking at is a, a satellite solution that's probably going to be in three or four years down the line, which we call a satellite modem or a satellite router. So you'll have a router on, a, on an, a platform that can switch between geos, meos, and leos, and, and you can actually start looking at the router making the decision what technology it's going to use, because certain technologies work well, certain have higher throughputs, certain are cheaper, uh, browsing is different than live TV as an example. 
So we look at, a, at, at, at growing the technology um, that you can use multiple satellite technologies on the same platform. And, and that's really what we're trying to say is when you look at the customer and the, what the customer wants, they want flexible, modular, and wireless. So what we do is we supply that to the customers, whether they're on an aircraft, whether they're on a, a ship, or in the middle of an NGO location, in a remote location, uh, somewhere in the world. And, and, and the way that we do it is, is using satellite communications. So, Barry, I think I made it. All right. They complain otherwise. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.